Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Adobe Live Creative Kickoff with your host today, Terry White. And today we're going to be concentrating on Photoshop. We're going to do some other things along the way, but it's really Photoshop on Wednesdays, so we will definitely get into some Photoshop techniques. Now, what I'm planning on doing is kind of picking up where I left off last time that I did one of these, and that was we were doing... Um, uh, how I would edit your photos and we got through a few of them and I think people were happy with that topic So I have I always have more photos left over from all the submissions that people do If you're saying oh my god, I want to submit a photo right now. It's too late <laughs> you, you have to meet the deadline which is usually the day before the stream and I put out that link on social media And I got some good submissions this week. So I'm excited to get into these uh, so, if this is your first time joining me live, great, welcome. If you're watching the replay, cool, thanks for watching the replay. I know that some of you are watching on various platforms. So, for example, I see Tim Dalton over on YouTube. I see Jamie on YouTube. I see Alberto on Facebook. I see Victoria and Ozzy on uh, Adobe Live. So, wherever you're watching, that's cool. You can hang out there. But if you want to participate in the main chat, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. That is where the main chat is taking place. Uh, but I'll try and keep track of all the chats just to make sure that I don't miss your question. But if I miss your question, it was definitely not on purpose. All right. So with that said, these are very short streams. They're like 25 minutes worth of content. So without further ado, let me go ahead and dive right in. All right. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my desktop so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I've got Lightroom Classic open. I created a catalog, you know, a year or so ago of this particular session so these are none of these are my photos these are all photos that people have submitted and even I'm looking at the, uh, the collection right now it's 186 photos that I still need to get to at some point so what I typically do is when people submit new ones for the new session I sprinkle them in or I you know I add them in but I also add in some of the ones I hadn't gotten to yet so you'll see one that was just submitted this week, one that wasn't submitted or was submitted two weeks ago or a month ago, or a year ago. So I, I try and, I'm going to try and get through them all at some point, but as more people submit photos and there's only so much time to do them, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of try and do them in the order they're submitted. All right. So with that said, this first one we're going to work on, actually, I don't even know that we're going to get to Photoshop on this one because I don't know that I need Photoshop on this one. And that's a lot of what goes on in a photographer's post-processing is we try to do as much as we can non-destructively in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic and take it into Photoshop if we need to. So you don't always need to, especially depending on the photo. And you'll see what I mean when I get to this particular photo, which is right now. So let's go ahead and go full screen on it. So um, it's a beautiful capture. I, I love this photo a lot. Um, and I, I, I could spend the entire 25 minutes on just working with this photo because it's so cool. It's such a great image. Now, one of the first things I'll notice right off the bat is that it is, uh, it, it is a uh, underexpo bit underexposed. So like she's like kind of just drifting off into the background here. You can't even see what's going on in the scene. So we'll need to adjust the exposure. There's all kinds of sharpening cap uh, or possibilities with this photo. Just, it's a cool image. So let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, I'm going to pop over into the develop module with this image. And now that I'm in the develop module, or if you're in regular uh, Lightroom Cloud, it would just be edit. And I have the same capabilities here. The first thing I'm going to do is go up to that basic tab. And right now, the profile for this is camera neutral. I'm going to switch it to Adobe Portrait. And that makes a slight change in just the overall, like gives me a starting point. Then I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and hit auto. And that will like just do its magic and bring back a lot of this photo that was just lost in the underexposedness of it. Uh, now that, that auto doesn't always give me everything I want. It, it gives me another good starting point and then I tweak from there. So auto in this case might have made it a little too bright. Uh, so I might pull back on that exposure just a little bit. So, uh, and that, that was, it was overexposing the highlights there and, and that's great. And I might also pull the shadows out a little more because I think the shadows can take it. So just because I start with auto doesn't mean I end with auto. 
And I still see some shadows being clipped, but they're being clipped in an area up here that I don't care about, so I'm good with that. Uh, the next thing I will do is, uh, like I said, there's a, we zoom in on this photo. I can see that there's all kinds of uh, texture capabilities here, but I, when I zoomed in, the first thing I'm noticing now is there's a lot of noise in this photo. So what I might wanna do from this point is go into the uh, detail uh, section of, of Lightroom and I might go in and just hit denoise. So this is the AI based noise reduction. And um, and we can see just here, I'm gonna go up to, if I can get up to the jewelry here, you can really see it. Uh, it's, it's zoomed in quite a bit. Here, let's zoom out. There we go, now let's zoom in. There we go. So this is before the noise reduction. I'm just holding down the mouse. When I let go, that is the noise reduction. Now, I don't always, like it just remembered the last number I was on. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be 68 on this particular photo. I always pull it back to like 50 as my starting point. And then when I look at 50, okay, now I can see noise. And I can say, okay, I, I don't want to give it any more noise reduction than it needs. So why give, why give it more? Um, let me see, I'm seeing a comment here. Take out the right seat. Okay, I'm not sure what that gray frame, okay, I'm not sure what that means. Um, but anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and pump up the noise reduction just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And what I'm looking for is, you know, the, the if I go all the way up, the noise will be completely gone, but then it's also blurring the photo a little bit. So I don't wanna go any higher than I need to. So that's why I'm doing it a little bit at a time until I got rid of most of the noise, like that was before, this is after, and I'm okay with a little bit of grain, that's fine for me. So now when I hit enhance, what that will do is it's in the background, it's making a new photo, it's making a new DNG, a new raw file uh, of that particular photo with the noise reduction applied. So it is non-destructive from the standpoint of, you still have your original without the noise reduction applied to it. Uh, now, and, and as you might also guess, because it is making a new DNG, that means that it only works with raw files right now. That denoise only works with raw. And uh, Voodoo Val, yep, this is a great image. I know, right? So now when I zoom in, yeah, see, now that that grain is gone, this looks a lot better. All right, so now, um, remember when I said there were all kinds of sharpening possibilities with this photo? She's wearing all kinds of cool jewelry. And she's got the nose ring going on there. Oh, just, just a great image. And even the, the clothes, like that could all stand some more texture. But what I typically don't like to do on a female subject is texturize the skin. I don't want the skin to be sharper. So what I'm gonna do is a little trick. I'm gonna go into my masking. And when I go into masking, that will automatically detect people. So it found a person, great. Yep, that's a person. <laughs> when I click on that person, I'm going to select all the things I don't want it to do. I don't want it to do her face skin. I don't want it to do her body skin. I don't want it to do her eye sclera. I don't want it to do, um, da, 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 da. I'm okay with the eyebrows. I'm okay with the hair. I don't, yeah, I don't want it to do the iris and pupil. I'll do those manually if I want to. And I don't want it to do the lips. And I don't want it to do the teeth. So basically everything but her facial features. All right, so now that I got that, I'm gonna go ahead and create that one mask of all of those things. So that will create a single mask of all of those things in person one. Now I'm gonna to go to that mask and I'm just going to click the little three dot menu here and I'm gonna choose invert, meaning this mask created everything you see in red. I want everything else. I don't want what's in red. So when I hit invert, that will basically give me everything else. So it gave me everything else I can play with and not have to worry about any of that texture that I'm about to do to happen to her face. Uh, so now I can scroll up in the develop panel here and I can go over to uh, texture. And now I can go ahead and zoom in and here. Let me zoom in on this. There we go. I don't know if I can zoom where I want to while I'm still doing this. But here, you can see it here. Uh, so if I go back on texture, that's like removing all the texture. If I go up on texture, that's going too far. But you can see what it's really doing to everything else except her face. 
Uh, and that's kind of what I want to do. I want to bring in some of that detail that's in this photo. And that's probably about enough of that. And if, um, if I wanted to do anything else while I've got this mask selected, for example, if I want to bring down the exposure a little bit more of the background, but keep her face exposed, I can do that because her face is a separate mask. So I can just bring down exposure just a hair on the background of everything else. And you know what? That's like, I, I can say that I'm done with the mask right now. Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that part of the photo or is that a curtain? I don't, I'm not sure what that is. And there's a little thing sticking out over here. I'm not sure what that is. But um, since I, it's, I'm showing you what I would do, I would just go ahead and remove that. And I would remove that. I'm just using the remove tool. And I'm okay with this because it just looks like a curtain in the door or something sticking out there. And the only other thing I might do, just because it's me, so I might grab the crop tool. I might bring it down just a little bit more. And by the way, I'm going to lock the aspect ratio. There we go. Bring it down just a little bit more. Kind of maybe move it to about there. All right. So that's what I would do to this photo. Again, I don't necessarily need to go into Photoshop for this photo because there's nothing in Photoshop that it needs. Well, I could say this. I could go into Photoshop for one thing. She does have that one little strand of hair going across her face there. And if that was bugging me, because it did bug me when I first went into it, I would go into Command E or PC Control E. That will take a copy of this raw file over to Photoshop, which it just did. And then I would zoom in and use Photoshop's new remove tool because it's better than the one in Lightroom. Make the brush smaller. And we would just do that. Oh, I think I got it set to not do it until I'm done. So, okay, we would do that. We would keep going. This is just being nitpicky. And while we're up here, might as well get it all. That one little strand of hair. And then I would say, go ahead and remove it. And now I'm happy. All right, so we did go into Photoshop after all. Didn't have to. One little nitpicky thing, but there we go. All right, so we'll save that. That will make yet another copy over in Lightroom with that. Um, so now we have three uh, with that uh, new PSD that came back from Photoshop. So you have the original NEF file. This was shot on an icon. I can tell by the NEF. We have the denoised DNG that was created with the denoise process. And then from that denoise, we went into Photoshop and that created this PSD. So uh, this is our final image after we did all that stuff to it. And I, like I said, great capture. This is just phenomenal. Like, great. We just took it. We just gave it a little juice, made it a little better. All right, this next photo. This is one that was in here for a while. I'm not sure how long I've had this photo to edit, but... I, I kind of like don't know what's going on here. Let's let's zoom in. Um, you're covering your the couple, and then you got the kid down here, and it looks like maybe another kid on the way. You got the kid down here is looking like I, I don't know what they're doing. All right, so, <laughs> so I don't know what they're doing either. Anyway, I'm not sure why they're hiding behind the hat, but cool. All right, we have an image. What would I do with it? Um, so in a case like this, it really needs some recomposing because there's a lot of just stuff, the trees, the sky is overexposed in the background. There's a lot of grass, has nothing to do with the photo. It's not really helping the photo at all. So let's go through our process in the develop module. We would go in and we would go to the basic panel and it is a raw file. So I would do camera portrait for this one as well. I would then hit auto. Now you see that auto really start to bring out some of that, uh, that, that background and that sky. I might even dehaze it a little bit more just to kind of really bring out some of those colors. I might bump up the exposure just a little bit more. And I would definitely bring up the shadows a bit more where the kid is right there. Just bring up that. Okay, so now that we got that done, you got to ask yourself, what's the main subject? The main subject is the people. Do I really need all this other stuff around it? As much of it anyway? And my answer is going to be no. 
Um, so I'm going to go in. So someone's asking, Tom's asking, how do I do, how do I submit photos after 19 March? You wait till the next one. So I, I put up the link a week before the next one, four or five days before the next one, and just follow me on social and you'll see my post announcing when the next one is, and it'll have a link in it to submit your photos, just like these people did. All right, so let's go into my crop tool, and let's, uh, since we don't really care about the original aspect ratio of this photo, at least I don't, I'm gonna switch to a four by five, eight by 10, and then I'm gonna come in even closer because that's what it's really about. It's about them, not about all the tree and the grass and all that other stuff. And if it is about all that other stuff, uh, it's not sentimental to me, so I have no idea about all that. All right, so now we got all of that going on. We got a lot less of that going on. So now you can focus on the couple and their kid or a kid. And uh, now I'm going to go in and say, okay, what's next most important? Since you're covering up and you don't want to be seen, I'm going to say that the kid's probably next most important. So let's go into the mask there. And it'll detect people. And it did find all the people. I'm going to go to the kid's mask. So it found one for each one. Let's go into the kid's mask. And let's just go in and we'll make a mask of the end. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe not. We're going to do facial skin. Uh, yep, I, I just care about his face right now. Um, maybe his hair. And maybe I'll get some of this other stuff too since I'm there. All right, so basically his face. Great. And all I want to do is I just want to bring out a little more brightness not that much that's spooky just a little bit more exposure on him basically just lighting his face and you might want to do it with shadows as well and less exposure more shadows just bringing him out of the shadows a bit um the only other thing i might do in this photo and this is just because let's get out of the mask for a second I might go in and I might do a, uh, let's go in and do a, let's do a vignette. Just kind of darkening those edges a bit. And yeah, that, that's, that's really about it. Um, I, I can't really think of anything else I'd want to do with this photo other than put you somewhere else and not have you standing in front of all that, all that foliage and trees and stuff. But other than that, that's kind of it because you didn't give me anything to work with up here. So we're going to focus on the main subject, which is the kid. All right, let's move on. Uh, next one. This is kind of a, again, a straight out of the camera raw file that we don't really have a lot to, um, to know about. I don't know where this is. Uh, so let's go in, let's start doing the things we would do. So let's try and bring some of it back. So first and foremost, I would switch this to uh, Adobe Landscape as my starting point. I would hit auto. I would then, um, yeah, cause there's just really not a whole lot going on here. Let's hit a little dehaze, bring some of that mountain back. And then maybe bump up the exposure a bit more. And also, I definitely want to do some, play with the white balance on this photo. Let's see what I can do with white balance. Let's go to uh, let's go to the white balance eyedropper. I just want to see what would happen if I click here. Not a whole lot. Yeah, I, I might bring it down a bit. Bring the temperature down because it looked a little too warm. The water looks a little too brown. <sighs> All right, one more thing I might do. I might go into the masking. I might go into a linear gradient and I might pull this down a bit, starting from the top down. And then I might go in and do, when I say might, I mean I am. Uh, <laughs> I might go in and just again add some more dehaze to that sky part up there yeah that's that's actually bringing that out nicely the sky is like there's nothing there but i could at least bring the mountain part out from there that's a little too much pull back and while i'm there i can certainly add some texture to that 
kind of bring that area out. Yeah, there, yeah there's, there's not a lot going on in this photo for me to redeem. Um, I don't know if it's time of day, weather conditions or whatever, but without a sky, there's really, it's just not very interesting. I, I guess that's the best. I'm not trying to critique your photo, even though I am. It's just, there's not a lot to edit to make it a lot better. Um, I could certainly go in and play with the, the colors of the water to kind of make it less brown. That's about it. All right, I'm going to move on. All right, let's go back to this one or go to this one. Now I got this cool, this kid caught, uh, caught a great action shot kid coming down the trail there on his, on his motocross bike. And, um, uh, it's obviously sponsored by Mitsubishi Motors. Um, the only thing that's making this distracting is the Mitsubishi Motors, uh, tape, the safety tape. I'm sure that's there for safety to keep the kid on the path or kids on the path that are riding their bikes. So that's cool, but let's, let's get rid of it. Uh, for the sake of the photo, uh, they they already rode past it, so we don't need it anymore. Uh, let's go in, and again, we'll just do uh, maybe an Adobe Portrait. It's not really going to make a big difference here. Let's hit Auto. Oh, yeah, love, so I brought really a lot of that color back. Uh, we can probably bring down the highlights a bit. I'm doing that right in the, um, in the histogram. You can drag any area of the histogram to make an adjustment as well. Um, the shadows are a little bit clipped, but I don't see anything uh, egregious and we'll probably add a little bit more texture while we're here and then bump the exposure a little bit more, just a little. All right. So great. I got the overall adjustment that I want. Now let's go ahead and head over to Photoshop. We'll hit command E and there it is in Photoshop. And what I would do again is do I really need this tape? And I'm going to, oh, that's all over the place. Yeah, so that's that's my distraction. So if I don't really need that tape, let's, let's get rid of it. Now I'm just using the remove brush, and I've got my remove brush not to do it after each stroke. So that's why when I let go, nothing's happening. So that way I can get it all painted in and then do the processing all at once. Now, um, people ask a lot of questions about the remove brush the, or the new remove tool is AI based, but it's not generative AI. So it's not using any generative AI credits or anything. It's not, uh, use, it's not making up pixels that don't exist. It's just using the surrounding pixels in a very AI based way. All right. Uh, why not? I can go for that too. And then we come over here. And we got a lot of it to deal with, so I'll make my brush bigger. And as I explained, a lot of times on these classes, you know, I didn't duplicate the layer because I still have the original back in Lightroom. I don't have to worry about if I totally mess up. I always have the original to go back to. All right, and we'll just keep going. And one of the things we can do is we can take our, our brush, make it big, click, hold down the shift key, and click to just get one stroke. Well, so if you like painting out a very long thing, click, shift key, click, and then that way you can go in. All right, um, now that I got all that done, we don't know what it's gonna look like until I click OK or click Commit. So let's go ahead and click Commit and see what that processing looks like. And the Remove tool is just, it's, a, it's an amazing tool to work with. Now you got your, you got your cycler, your cycler is the um, the star of the show, the only other thing I would do now, I'll go ahead and go back to Lightroom with this copy because again, it keeps the original. So now that I'm back in Lightroom with the copy without all that tape, the only other thing I might do is, um, you, you got them centered right in the frame. Now, typically when something's moving, you want to keep the area in front of it to, you know, have, give, give the person, the animal or whatever it is somewhere to go. But we don't necessarily need to see all of the back of it, now, unless the trail is interesting. In this case, eh. So I, the only other thing I might do is I might, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I always hit the wrong key because it's different in different light rooms. I might go into the crop tool. And uh, once again, I might crop it like that. Just refocusing using rule of thirds that this is my most interesting part.
keeping part of the trail here. Oh, no, you know what? Let's pull that back down. Want to know that he's got more trail to go on. All right, so that, that again, that's just, ju that's just personal preference. You might keep it all the way it was. It's up to you. Um, but yeah, that's how I would edit that photo. And we're already out of time just that quickly. So I hope you got something out of this. Uh, I'm going to bid you guys a fair adieu at this point. And we will, of course, keep coming back to do more of these kinds of um, creative kickoffs on Wednesday. So hopefully you got something to start your day in the middle of your day or the end of your day to inspire you to do more. All right. So with that said, cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.